welcome to Straight Talk with Carl Elizabeth Thorne. And today I have with me, Derek Robbins. So today we're going to be talking about some performance coaching and all about self-development. So welcome, Derek. Thank you for having me. It's been a long time since we've seen each other, but I'm really happy to have you here with me today. I'm excited to be here and hopefully share some amazing insights with everybody listening in. So first I'd like to ask you, what got you involved in the self-development field? Um, that's a big question. I, I always say I, I literally was born and grew up in this industry. My, my very, very first seminar was in my mom's belly at just a few months old. I, I don't know how far along I was, but she was doing her NLP Master Practitioner training with my godfather, John Grinder, and she was teaching people how to break through their fears and phobias by breaking bricks with their bare hands. So I always joke around and say through osmosis, I had to pick something up at that stage of life. Um, but besides literally physically growing up in the environment, uh, when, I, when I had time to choose a few different options of what I wanted to do with my life and where I wanted to go and how I wanted to help and what difference I wanted to make, it always came down to people. And what really got me into this is the passion to help people. Um, what I figured out along the way was it's less about the vehicle you use and it's more about the message you're trying to get to the world. And my message is to help people live the life of their dreams and life on their terms of what they really want to do with who they are and what they're all about. And my, the other piece of that message is physically hands-on helping them. Um, as much as I like writing checks and donating towards great causes, I like physically helping people and being a part of it right there in the moment. Um, so in that, I figured out that as of right now in history, coaching, speaking, and training is the best vehicle to help me get this message to the world. Uh, what's interesting is thanks to YouTube and other social media channels, there's better vehicles that are coming through that give us the ability like this to broadcast to thousands or millions of people at the same at once instead of just working one-on-one -on -one or in a room that fills maybe 5,000 people. Now we can reach millions instead of just thousands, which is beautiful. So for the, the, what's fun is the evolution of what's being available of how to reach even more people to inspire them along the journey. I agree with you completely. A lot of people shy away from technology, and I love doing these shows because you're right. And it's hard now more and more to film rooms because people have families, they have children, they have jobs, and a lot of people want to spend their weekends at home with their families. So it's getting harder and harder to do live workshops because people are just very busy. And so these type of shows allows us to share our whatever our inspirations are, our valuable to tools and tips that we have for people, and they can listen to them when they have their free time. It could be at their lunch hour, and it could be sitting in their chairs at home, and they can also share these tools with their families. So I think this is a great venue. Not only that, but we can reach people in third world countries and people all around the world now. So I love this tips and tools that we have that we can use now, like Vimeo, Google Hangouts, Skype, and it's, I think this is really valuable tools. So one thing I'd like for you to do, because you do have a really, like you said, from the womb on now, been able to study, learn, through some amazing mentors, very valuable self-development tools. So what are some of your favorite tips and tools that you can share with people that you've learned along the way, that you've used in your own life and have walked the talk, because that to me is very valuable, that you would like to share with the audience? Um, sure. I, I'd say if you rewind and look throughout my life, there are some very important lessons that have happened in the past decade of my life. I just turned 30 a couple weeks ago, and, and as young as it is, it's an eye-opening experience to just think back and be like, wow, three decades. I, I realize that I've been coaching for over 12 years now, which blew my mind. Um, worked with thousands of clients from all over the world and speaking for over 10 years now, and I was like, wow, I've been, I'm old enough to do things a decade long. <laughs> And it's silly, and I know it's still getting started in my world, and for most of the people, it's still a young age. But looking back over the last 10 years of my life, I looked for one of the most important lessons that I really learned about life that are needed so much in today's society, and needed not just in the U.S., but worldwide. And one of the biggest lessons I learned along my journey um, was how to fall in love with hard work, and not how to work hard, 
because there's a mistake a lot of young people make nowadays. And young people, I always term, if you're below the halfway mark in your life, meaning if people live over 100 years old and you're, you're at the 50-year-old mark or younger, you are young. You're not even halfway. <laughs> and even in your 60s, you're still young. 70s, eh, getting older. But 60s, 50s, 40s, you're still young. There's a very, very large chunk of people that because of the good-heartedness of their parents and the generation before us, they gave so much and, and worked so hard to give you the ability to get an education or go to good school or have the necessities taken care of as you grew up that it robbed you from the hunger and drive of wanting to build something. And it gave you a dependency of wanting to reach out to a family member in need or wanting to reach out to your mom, your dad, your uncle, your, your grandma, your grandpa, somebody when things get tough. And I watch this in, in some of my own friends, family members, even parents. And you watch this happen, and then it built a generation that is now the millennials being taught you can do anything you want with your life, and whatever you want is yours, and go out and live your dreams. And life is all about making yourself happy and abundant and fulfilled, which is beautiful. At the same time, it created these young people who we get caught up knowing how to work hard at the things we like to do, but avoiding the things that are actually hard work that we don't enjoy. And one of the biggest lessons I've learned is not how to endure hard work, not how to survive hard work, not how to make it through it or last until I you know, make it to the other side. How do you fall in love with that process of doing the things that you don't necessarily love? How do you really learn how to enjoy every moment of it? And it came down to really just switching two things, your perception of what it is you're doing, getting rid of the ego, letting go any of that entitlement attitude of I deserve better than this, I should get paid more than this, you know, I'm smarter than this, I'm better educated than this, I should, they should be paying me more or valuing me more. Letting go of the ego, figuring out that life owes us nothing and that we owe everything to life. And instead of saying, what can I get out of this, turn to how do I give more of myself to this? And what can I give to this? And how much more of myself can I pour into this regardless of what I'm getting back? Because what I give will absolutely amplify in my world and around me. People want to try to be the most valuable person within a company or organization, yet they're adding the least amount of value to that company or organization. So how do you get into the mindset of how do I give the most and add the most value to everything I do and every person I deal with? Secondary factor is once you get into that mindset of really falling in love with adding value and really pouring your heart and soul into something, secondary factor was how do you fall in love with life no matter how much or how little you have? And this is a big thing that you hear stories that were in the paper of the Russian man who was, I think, the third richest man on earth. And right before the financial stuff shifted worldwide, and all of a sudden the financial stuff shifted, and the guy rose from number three to number 16. And because he can't take the drop emotionally, he throws himself in front of a train because he's only the 16th richest human being on earth. And I don't know about you, but I, I could survive being number 16 in the world. <laughs> um, but for some reason, this gentleman couldn't, so he took his own life. And I look around at the young people of today and even some of the older people today and we're so attached to our stuff and what we created and what we have that we feel like if we ever lose any of our things, everything's gone. So if you don't believe me, try losing your cell phone for a day and see what happens. For most people, if you take their cell phone away and hide it for even four or five hours, they will freak out because it's something of theirs that's missing and they're freaking out over this little thing. But at the same time, we're so attached to our stuff, we've forgotten what it is to fall in love with life in its simplest form. And one big lesson is I went and spent three months stacking lumber in Canada, learned how to fall in love with that hard work. I remember having my own moment of my breakdown and my breakthrough where I was sitting there stacking lumber, and I heard all those thoughts of entitlement show up in my head. I should be getting paid more than this. I'm, I'm more valuable than this. I have a degree. I should be doing a job that is valued more in society. Granted, I wasn't getting paid anything because I was working for my family. Um, but that thought process existed, and I had to break through it and get myself to that value position. Second, I spent three months living in a village in Uganda, no running water, no electricity, no toilets, learning how to fall in love with life in its absolute simplest form. That way you fall in love with community, conversation, connection, the people around you, the ability to just live life, to breathe and soak in all the beauty around you and really value it and cherish it for what it is. And in that moment, it brought me back to the simplest form of remembering how abundant we are from the inside out, the beauty of life that exists around us, and how to really enjoy every moment of it. Now, from those life lessons, it really set up a foundation to go you know, take life and make the most of it. Because from a total place of abundance 
and also from a place where I knew I was only here to serve and give everything I could to the world, expecting nothing back in return. So those are really key, valuable things that you said. First of all, I think everybody should go to a third world country and experience what it's like not to have what they have. I personally grew up from the time I was five in Mexico, Venezuela, and Brazil. So I had that experience of knowing what people don't have. Now, of course, I wasn't living like that because I lived in, a, in a, you know, a really nice house. However, I also experienced what others didn't have because obviously I've been to those places in other areas while I was living there. So I got to experience both and. But I think everybody needs to have that experience of not having and also, like you did, you actually went to go live in those experiences. So I think everyone needs to have that experience. And I myself, personally, went, when I went to go live in Hawaii for years, I actually went to go live in the jungle with, you know, having an outhouse, lived in an octagon, in a tent, you know what I'm saying? So I did that for three months and actually did with no cash. I actually took away, like, no bank account, no credit cards, no nothing, no car, I wanted the experience of living off the land, knowing what it was like. to. So I, I always put myself in extreme situations to push myself out of the elements of not having the comfort. So I'd always push myself. And I also, also did like ropes courses and stuff like that to push myself further and further and further out of my comfort zone whenever I felt completely safe, if, you know, when we get kind of in a rut. I think it's important that everyone does it every now and again to get ourselves out of the elements when we get so comfortable and lazy, if you will. So I think that was a really valuable thing that you brought up. And I think it's also really important that we also push our minds, feed our minds through reading and taking self-development courses. So we do are constantly feeding our minds things that we're not exposed to on a normal level, at just you know through normal things. So I think you and I, because we've always put ourselves in the self-development mindset, we've pushed ourselves, and a lot of people don't do that, and I think it's such a valuable tool. Do you not think that's true? Um, it is a valuable tool, and instead of self-development courses, go have self-development experiences. Like uh, you, exactly. And what's, a lot of people nowadays learn all kinds of great stuff, but they never apply it. They sit through university classes, they get a degree in something, they have an official stamp and seal that says they're certified in something, um, whatever it is, whether it's you know massage therapy or, or Reiki all the way to a PhD in medical science. Like I don't know what they studied, but they do very little with it. So my thought is instead of getting a piece of paper and earning the stamp that says you know what you're talking about, go get the real life experience that goes with it. Meaning, I, I met doctors in the village of Uganda who, instead of doing their residency locally in the city they lived in, they flew to Uganda for a few months every year and did their residency there. Which, there's options available to get yourself out into the world to experience all that life has to offer and get out of the bubbles that we live in. We live in our bubbles of our community, of our friends, of the little things we like to do. There's nothing wrong with those to live there and to enjoy it, but make sure you get outside of that bubble every so often just to see what life has to offer. And the more you can fill up and fuel up on all the beauty and magnificence around the world of what life truly has to offer in every way, shape, and form, the more it grows who you are as a human being. Nothing wrong with sitting in courses and soaking up great knowledge, but if you don't ever put that knowledge to work, it's not worth much. I call those shelf help courses. Yeah. And, and that's what I, when I say I go to self-development self courses, I go to courses that actually put you through courses that meaning active courses. You don't go through sitting through in a room. They actually put you out in the field. <laughs> so I've always gone to courses where it's been both and, where part, it's partially inside of a room. The rest of it's outside. I, I personally can't sit through hours and hours and hours of being in a hotel. That, to me, isn't um, absorbing. I have to actually, actually take something and do something with it. Um, I've done both. I mean, I actually, you know, obviously I've done courses where you're inside. However, for me, I like to take what I have and walk the talk. So I, I agree with what you're saying. You have to actually take the stuff and, and, and actually absorb it and integrate it and do something with it. Because otherwise, it's actually taking the course and putting it on a shelf. You won't, you won't actually see any results. You have to actually apply it and do something with it. I absolutely agree with you. So I also know you actually have a beautiful organization that you have developed. So what are you doing with that? What are you actually doing with it and encouraging people to do. So talk to me about your company. 
Um, sure. I built my company five years ago, partially just out of possibility of seeing if it was possible at the time. Um, I was working three jobs for my dad's company at the time. I was doing coaching for them. I was do, uh, working at the warehouse, stuffing boxes and organizing stuff. And I was also doing inside sales to supplement my income. And I was at a point in life where I really wasn't happy with what I was doing, but I was just doing it because it was available. And I found myself where most people find themselves when they first get out of school or first hit a point where they're looking for a job. Instead of saying, what do I feel that I was made to do on this planet and what are the gifts and talents I want to take to the world, uh, most people will say, well, you know, what, what, what's available? What jobs are open right now that I can go apply for and hopefully get one? And there's nothing wrong with that in the beginning to supplement your income and to get a foundation to use to build upon. Um, but, but that's not necessarily the best approach in the world to find what you're going to stick with forever. <laughs> it's a good starting point, but it's not a good lasting point. And that starting point for me, I had three different jobs, I busted my butt, and I, I attended a course that was teaching about setting up your own business and internet marketing and all these great tools, and I decided to use it. I literally took the book home and I said, I'm going to read through this book and I'm going to figure out everything I could apply to see how it works for me. And that's a big proponent of who I am. I like to test stuff. I don't like to believe what people tell me. I like to see if it's real. So I took the book, opened it up, went from chapter 1 to chapter 12, went through all the different chapters, and every single chapter I just applied it and see if it worked for me. Some of it did, some of it didn't, A-OK. -okay. But as I did that, I literally got to a point where I started a business. I put up on – we have a rainstorm here. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Uh, it's downpouring outside. Uh, it's beautiful. Reminds me of Central and South America. Um, but – Literally, we were. I just went through it and started applying it from online marketing to building a website. My first website was horrific, but at least I did it. I just took action, got it up there. It was a black and white website. I didn't know how to create a banner, so I said welcome at the top in black and white. I had a picture of me in black and white because I didn't have a color one at the time. I had a small bio of who I was, and it said coaching at the bottom. And then it had three packages, three months, six months, 12 months, and a button that said sign up here. And I don't know how in the world it worked, but I got my first client, which was a partner of a law firm in London who hired me to help his team with time management and efficiency. We did very well for them. They recommended us to other people, and it helped grow my business. That's how it started, and it started from the front end of a house where I had three roommates I was renting the house with, and they used to stick their head in my curtain because I had a curtain as a door, and they'd stick their head in and say, what are you doing in here? And I'd look at them like, building my business, and they're like, bull, what are you really doing? <laughs> And as my business started to take off, I went from zero clients to 52 clients a month in my first eight months of business. I went from zero in revenue to 100,000 in revenue in that first eight months. And I remember them sticking their head in the curtain and be like, are you doing something illegal to make all this money? Like, what are you really doing here? <laughs> and I started laughing because it was working and it was growing and I was busting my butt. And what I did is a lot of people, I, I get this question all the time of how do you like make all your money and how do you grow your business so fast in the beginning? Um, great question at the same time. It happened because I really, really, really fell in love with the hard work. Not just the stuff I liked doing, but the stuff I didn't necessarily love doing. I fell in love with it and I got very good at doing it every day no matter what. Second, I came from a place of absolute abundance. I did not need a single thing from any one of my clients. I had three jobs. I was making enough money to cover myself. I wasn't happy with it, but I had the base to start with. So I didn't need anything from them. And I was in a place where all I wanted to do was give everything I could to these people so that they literally felt like I wanted nothing from them but to give. Now, it made them feel very comfortable in the process of enrolling because they knew I wasn't trying to get them to sign the deal, to get my money, to get paid. I was literally just trying to help them in their business and their life. And it gave them a freedom that if they wanted to go somewhere else, no problem. I'd be here for them anytime. And for some reason, that abundance mentality really naturally drew people in as clients. Grew my business very quickly. I ended up leaving those three jobs as soon as my income met what the other three job incomes were. I succeeded, passed up that income, let go of the three jobs, focused full-time on coaching, and grew that business. Now, what we do in the business, very simply, is this. I figured out my core message was really, truly helping people live life on their terms, helping people design the absolute ideal vision for their life and turn that into reality. Now, we do that through performance training, time management training, uh, the main focus is we have performance coaching, accountability coaching, and lifestyle coaching. Those are our three main focuses. Mostly they're for business, either employees as far as sales employees, as far as performance and accountability goes. Entrepreneurs need accountability as well. And then the business owners like the lifestyle coaching because they're already very successful at what they do. They need kind of a restructuring and rebalancing of their overall life. Those are our three main focuses. 
We also do performance training and speaking all over the world with keynote speeches and performance training in offices. And then we have a, uh, the other pieces, we have online training programs, and we also have um, our book coming out in September, Live It, Achieve Success by Living a Purpose. And then the final piece we do is our retreat every year, where, like we mentioned and we were talking about, we take people to environments around the world and hands-on let them learn about themselves, learn about the world, have crazy fun adventures like volcano boarding in Nicaragua or zip lining in Costa Rica, and then also volunteer to give back and make a difference in those communities, whether it's building a school, building a house, delivering water, or doing something to make the community a better place because we were there. Now that sounds really exciting. I love I love those type of adventures because A, they do grow, so you're putting them out of their comfort zone at the same time they're giving back. So I think that's a really great type of retreat. That sounds really wonderful. I'm really proud of you. I've, I've really, so I've watched you grow. I mean, I, we go way back, and I've really watched you grow, and it's, it's just been an amazing journey to watch all that. So I, I really wish you all the success in the world, I and mean, it's just absolutely amazing to watch all this. So it's just been amazing to just watch you just, just you know, <laughs> it's been really great. So and I really just wish you everything. And I, I'm, I'm so excited you also got engaged, so I wish you blessings and all that as well. Thank so you. What, so what are some last bits of golden nuggets you'd like, like to leave with the audience? What are some really key notes that you'd like to say that are some things that are really important for people to just actually go out there and take action on? Um, it's really simple. It depends on what they're focused on in life, but whatever they're focused on in life, we have a three-part credo and philosophy we live by which is learn, live, and give. And it's really simple that whatever you're after in life, if you're after better results in your health, your business, your finance, your relationship, if you're after taking over the world or whatever it is you're doing, literally go out there and learn every single thing it takes to turn that dream into reality. And once you learn exactly what it takes, the second part is live it fully, meaning fully apply every single thing you learn. If it works for you, keep doing it. If it doesn't work, get rid of it and try something else. But just apply every single thing you can until you get the results you really desire and deserve. Now, once your life becomes your message, you don't have to stand on a soapbox and tell everyone what you've learned. You don't have to go preach or tell, try to convince everybody to do it your way. You let your life become your message, where how you live and who you are in the world and how you treat people and how you communicate and the way that you walk and talk and sleep and eat and breathe and just participate in life that becomes so clearly who you are and what you want your message to the world to be that people will follow in suit if that's what they look for is in their life as well. Allow that to happen. And the third part, find a way to pay it forward. That when you're living your dreams, when you're have, you know, taking life by the horns and making it the way you want it and you're doing everything you want to do, find a way to pay that forward to other people and help them do the same in their own unique way, whatever way that is for them, but help them create it. And so learn what it takes to turn your dream life into reality. Live it, turn that dream into reality, and really get the results you desire and deserve. And finally, give it. Pay forward and find a way to make a difference in the world by sharing what worked for you and hopefully helping inspire others to do the same. Now, that I love. So that's one of my greatest things is I don't think people realize the ripple effect we have. I get people tell me, well, I'm, I don't make enough money. I'm just one person. How can I affect? And I keep on telling people they just don't get it. If Imagine it. Even if it's just one quarter, if everyone did one quarter, what the impact would, would be. And it's, it doesn't even have to be a quarter. It's, you know, helping someone across the street. It's helping someone at the grocery store with their bags to the car. It's whatever you can do. It doesn't matter what it is. It's the ripple effect. And, they just, and it's, it's exactly what you said. And I, don't, and I also tell people that are spiritual and say, well, you know, you can be spiritual and abundant, the people that are mixed with that message as well. It's like if, if, you're, if you think money is evil, imagine if you, if you were really, really abundant and had a ton of money, you could go buy a forest if you're, if you're afraid of having the trees you know, disappear. Or you know, take all the money you have and go buy wells and give people water. I mean, there's, you know, so that whole message about you know, money is evil. There's so many things that we can do if we have the wealth to go give back. So other people argue about that aspect of it. And it's like such an amazing thing when you are wealthy, what you can do. So money isn't evil. It, it just depends on what you do with your money. So I always try, it, it's amazing to me when people fight with that whole money aspect of things. So we can do so much with money to help others. And I believe in giving people a hand up, not a handout, because the handout doesn't really help them. 
It's really giving them the tools to better their lives through education and showing them what they can do with their lives. So it's, it's, I love everything you said today. It's been, I thank you so much for joining me and sharing your wisdom because your wisdom has been, I know that what you've said here today is going to help many, many people. So thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with me. This is sure. absolutely thank amazing having you. Thank you for having me. So um, also, this is a podcast, so can you please share with everybody where they can find you? Um, sure. The easiest and best place to find me is jarekrobbins.com, J-A-I-R-E-K-R-O-B-B-I-N-S.com. And as everybody knows, I put together an entire blog post that has all of Jarek's information. It'll have his website, all his links, and all his information where you can find him. You've been with your host, Carly Lissa Thorne, and you can find me at C-A-R-L-Y-A-L-Y-S-S-A-T-H-O-R-N-E.com. I wish everyone a beautiful afternoon and evening. I look forward to bringing you much more valuable information next week. And for today, that's it. And I'm very blessed to have Jarek Robbins with us today. And I look forward to seeing everyone next week. Thank you so much, everybody. And thank you so much, Jarek, again. It's been wonderful having you.